Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, it's the first day of my four day holiday weekend and it's basically rained all day. I haven't left my house with the exception of walking outside to run the garbage out in the rain. But other than that, I've been inside doing stuff all day. Now, I kid you not, I just sat down to start filming this and the place across the street started sawing boards. So if you hear the saw going, sorry, but I need to film and I can't wait any longer. Today, I just want to talk about one of my latest acquisitions and that is, ta-da, the Sony 200 to 600 super telephoto lens. Once I originally had decided that I was gonna start shooting human beings again and that that opportunity had presented itself and I got the a7R4 and I started buying other lenses uh, and then getting back in a full frame selling all my APS-C gear and getting another full frame camera uh, in my head I was gonna get a 24 to 70 70 to 200 an 85 and a 35 and then that was it and I ended up getting the Sigma 24 to 70 the Sigma 85 and the Sigma 100 to 400. Well, since I had that lens, that 100 to 400, and I'd never had anything that had that kind of reach before, I decided to go when I was on a walk, that was at Pleasure House Point, and I started shooting, and I was like, okay, but there's some birds here, let me see what I can get. And I found that I actually really enjoyed doing that. And that just turned into, you know, since this opportunity has never arisen and I've been checking in from time to time with the guy that told me about it and it just, nothing's come from it. Which sucks, but okay, I still have the gear and it still took me in a different direction and led me to birding and, and just wildlife in general. And, and I have found that, that that has now become my zen and I enjoy that immensely and I do it as often as I can. With the 100 to 400, yeah, I got some great pictures and all that kind of stuff, but I knew that there were, there were you know, more amazing lenses out there than that. You know, Sony has a 600 millimeter F4, which is $13,000. <laughs> I knew I wasn't ever getting that. I know that they had a 200 to 600 lens that is not nearly as fast. In fact, it's 5.6 to 6.3. So definitely not a fast lens, but I figured, I'm out there shooting birds, wildlife, stuff like that. It's gonna be in the daylight. It's, it's not like I can go do that at night. So how fast does it need to be, you know? I'm like, okay, that goes on the list. That's something that I'm gonna have to get sometime, probably not anytime soon. Segway, couple of months now, we're, we're, you know, we're doing the birding thing. I'm back on the road. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I've got an A7C now. I got a 20 millimeter Sony lens that I'm, that I'm you know, using for filming and now I got a second ZV-1, and anywho. So I got all this stuff now, and I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? I really, really, really want that 200 to 600 lens, but I gotta sell something to get that. Like, that, that's how I work. In order to buy something new, I feel like I've gotta get rid of something older, uh, and I thought to myself, well, if I were to get the 200 to 600, I wouldn't ever use the 100 to 400. It would, it would be enough of an overlap that it'd be stupid to have them both. And I know that Yankee Cowboy wanted to get the 100 to 400 at some point. So I ended up selling Yankee Cowboy the 100 to 400 and I got this 200 to 600. Now, there is a known issue. Doesn't happen to them all, but it does happen to many enough that it's become a thing. The thing is, is that it's only this combination of the A7R4 and the 200 to 600 lens that this happens to because everyone that's had this issue said it doesn't do it on my a7r3 it doesn't do it on my a7 III, it doesn't do it on any other camera or people will say every other lens is tack sharp with my a7r4 except the 200 to 600 so for some reason the combination of the sony 200 to 600 and the sony a7r4 sometimes produces less than stellar results they they are not sharp and sometimes they're just point blank out of focus. So I was like, Ugh, do I really want to buy into that? Do I want that to happen to me? And then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna roll the dice. I usually luck out and things, I usually end up getting good copies of stuff. So I said, to hell with it. I talked to Yankee Cowboy. He absolutely jumped on the 100, 400 lens and I was able to get this 200 to 600 at a discount. 
And so I go, I, I went ahead and I did it, and I got the lens. And it wasn't supposed to come in until this past Monday, but it came in the Friday before, much to my elation. So I immediately uh, took it out the next day, because that day I had shit to do. And actually Saturday it rained. But anyways, I, I think I told you all about that. But regardless, I've been going out several days playing with this lens. And it is absolutely everything I hoped and wished that it could be. It is perfect with my a7r4 i do not have the the softness issue it it is a perfect copy I, like i'm actually at some points i have to move back or, or or zoom out a little bit because i'm too close to the birds <laughs> and and i mean i'm like oh my god so like i couldn't be happier i couldn't recommend this freaking lens enough if wildlife birding stuff like that is your thing you absolutely have to save your pennies up do what you got to do to get one of these lenses you will not regret it i'm gonna hold it up again and i'm gonna show you how big it is this thing is freaking huge it literally is the length of, of my torso it comes from like my belly button to the to like my adam's apple it's freaking huge it weighs 4.65 pounds on its own that doesn't include the camera and you know I have my camera with the grip and all that stuff and It is just massive. It is huge now. You can see I'm moving it around. There's no problem and it does have several different modes for steady shot all that being said though this damn thing's heavy and trying to hold it when you're zoomed out to 600 millimeters or you put it in APS-C mode and now you're at 900 millimeters, trying to handhold and get a shot of something that's kind of moving is, I have not perfected it yet. And I have tried. I've only been trying for a week, but it's hard. So that's why I gotta carry my tripod with the gimbal head on it. And, and then once you get it balanced properly and you got that working, it, it's a big help. But if you think you're going to go out there and handhold this thing for several hours while you're hiking through the woods and all that kind of shit, I hope you had your Wheaties for breakfast every day for several years because it is not easy to do. And I've been sort of like carrying it over my shoulder like this and everything in here is just, uh, uh, it's so painful. And I'm going to have to come up with a better way of doing it. I think from now on, if I'm going out into the, into the woods with this thing, I'm going to have to wear my backpack. Then at least I can put the backpack across the shoulder strap so it's not digging right into my flesh. Or I'll just put the tripod, you know, cinch it to the backpack and then carry the camera separately. Now, the other thing is, is that it has these little points on the side where you can put a strap. So I saw a video or not a video but somebody had suggested that perhaps the angle that like the edges in there the angles that they were cut at makes the edge very sharp and he already felt that it was like cutting into the thing that he had put through there for his strap and suggested that you get in there with like a dremel or something and smooth it out so that's exactly what i did yesterday i got a dremel tool and like an emery board for your nails and i sanded those edges down to more of a round edge so that it didn't cut it because he's like you know if you're using that peak design those little peak design anchors man you better rethink that because it's going to cut through that shit like butter and that freaked me out because i'm i would die if i dropped this the whole setup so i did do that and now i can say you know i've got my plate double double anchored there so that it doesn't spin it doesn't come off and all that stuff and I definitely recommend that you use either these anchors or you find some other way to put your strap on the lens itself, not the camera. Because if you've got this thing hanging, you're gonna start messing with your, with your lens coupler there and you don't wanna do that. So definitely make sure that when you're carrying this thing, you're either holding it by the collar or the lens or you have a strap that's holding it by those points and you should be good to go. Other than that, <clears throat> there isn't really much I can say. I don't need to go over specs. I don't need to, to talk about build quality, this, that, or the other thing. It's a Sony G lens. It's built like a brick shit house. It has weather sealing. It's awesome. And it helps you get fantastic images. And I couldn't be happier. And I just wanted to tell everybody that. And I wanted to recommend this lens. Definitely, definitely 
if you can get a copy of it, get a copy of it and get your ass out there and start shooting. Now, I don't shoot human beings usually, so it's not, and I don't have kids, so it's not like I'm going to basketball games or sporting events or shit like that, but this can totally be used for that. So, you know, a lot of the videos that I watched, that's what people did. They went to like football games or soccer games or lacrosse games or whatever. And, and one of them had a 600 millimeter F4 and one of them had this 200 to 600. And hands down, most of them said they preferred this lens because 600 millimeters, you're at 600 millimeters. You can't, you know, unless you're physically moving forward and backwards, which a lot of times you can't do at sporting events, it's great to have this so that you can zoom in, zoom out. And, and I agree, I think it's fantastic because like I said, with some of these birds, I'm so close to him now that I literally have to, to back off. So, all right, enough. I don't need to go on. I highly recommend this. This is monkey recommended, and you will not regret it. It's expensive, it's heavy, it's worth every penny, and it's worth all the freaking pain in your shoulders from carrying it. Start lifting weights. All right, that's really all I got for you today. I just wanted to talk about this because I freaking love it and I'm excited, and it's made me go out and shoot as often as possible, and that's not a bad thing. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.